Channel 11. This is the News at 10. Good evening. For most of us, going to work can be a chore, but for released kidnapping captive Harvey Weinstein, it was pure joy today. Indeed it was. Weinstein got a hero's welcome on his return to the tuxedo company he owns. It was a day that he spoke at length publicly for the first time about his harrowing ordeal. He was snatched off the streets and thrown into a hole far below the ground for 12 days. Rosemary Gomez was there for this emotional day. The emotion outside the Lord West Tuxedo Factory was enough to make a grown man cry. After weeks of wondering what happened to their boss, Harvey Weinstein paid a personal visit to show his employees he's alive and well. The tuxedo magnet emerged from his Upper East Side apartment for his first full day of formal appearances, still sporting the beard that became a measure of his captivity. I want to look at this when I wake up in the morning as a reminder of the great good fortune that God has given to me. Oh, the, is back! The, is back! the former Marine spent 12 days underground in a steel-covered pit he dubbed the Black Hole of Calcutta. Today, in his first official news conference, Weinstein gave the public a glimpse of his kidnapping ordeal. In this room, I feel maybe I did die and this is heaven. <laughs> After giving thanks to two of the detectives who helped him finally see the light. To have to live through this to understand the depth of despair when I really gave up, almost. And then to hear the tapping and to feel that grimy hand. For Weinstein, the terror began two weeks ago after leaving his favorite diner in Queens. As I was closing the door, getting into my car, a man pushed his face against the glass and started to pull the door open. The company executive says he told his kidnappers they had the wrong man after hearing they wanted $5 million in ransom. He spent the next 12 days in a pit off the West Side Highway, hoping someone would hear his cries for help. And Commissioner, if you heard me in the cave when I was yelling at Janet Reno <laughs> to get more people on this case. <laughs> In this exclusive interview yesterday, Weinstein told Channel 11 his training as a Marine helped him survive his days in solitary confinement on a diet of fruit and water. His true grit got him a pat on the back from both the mayor and the police commissioner, two other ex-Marines. I want you to wear this in, in good health as well. The tuxedo tycoon says his mind kept him going when his body was losing strength. He says he has no plans of living in fear. But Weinstein admits the greatest devastation was later learning from police that one of his own employees took part in his kidnapping. The city's latest hero could be back at work as early as tomorrow. He's already told his secretary whenever he gets upset to show him his picture on the front page of a newspaper so he can be reminded of just how lucky he really is. From Queens, I'm Rosemary Gomez for the Channel 11 News at 10. About the only thing Weinstein didn't want to talk about today was a furious bidding war that's already going on for his story. The media sharks have been circling Harvey Weinstein since almost the moment he was rescued. Tabloid TV shows and made-for-TV types and deluging the Weinstein family with offers. But for now, Weinstein is avoiding the lure of Hollywood. Mr. Weinstein, have you sold the rights to your story yet? No. Have you no. had a lot of offers? I, 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 I can't discuss that. I want to retreat back to who I really am. Anonymous Harvey Weinstein. If the Weinsteins do sell their story, the payoff could be big. The couple who was stranded in a Nevada snowstorm last winter, well, they reportedly were paid $650,000 for their story. Jack? There were some tense hours in Brooklyn today. A gunman accused of sex crimes barricaded himself inside a Williamsburg apartment, and two cops were wounded before it was all over. Stephanie Shelton has the story. It ends some eight hours after it begins. Sebastian Sapala is carried out of his apartment, but the standoff ends without violence. That is not how it begins. Sapala, the building superintendent seen here in an old snapshot, barricades himself in his first floor apartment about noon. Outside the building, two women tell police Sapala sexually assaulted one of them. Two emergency service officers arrive, 29-year-old Andrew Hill and 41-year-old Richard Bossetti. We believe he fired at least two or three rounds that came right through the door. Uh, the police officer standing in a hallway returning to fire, firing approximately nine rounds. This is the only exchange of gunfire. Hill is rushed to Bellevue with a groin wound. He is in serious but stable condition. Bossetti is only slightly wounded in the arm. He stays on duty for another hour. The hostage negotiating team arrives. So does the police robot. 
Police try to telephone Sipala. He hangs up several times. Neighbors say Sipala is a Vietnam veteran, a bodybuilder known as Conan. He has a gym in his apartment. For what everybody says, he's a weird person. A lot of people are scared of him from the building. At 6.30, more than six hours after the two cops are shot, there is still no report of any actual police contact with Sapala. At 6 o'clock, the police send out their robot with a camera eye to scope out the windows to see if this guy's still alive. The robot actually breaks one of the windows. We explained the, the hopelessness of the situation. He said he wasn't feeling well. We directed him to put his hands where he could see him. We had him on the observation with the remote television cameras. Police find two handguns in his apartment. The standoff is over. In Williamsburg, Stephanie Shelton, Channel 11 News at 10. Investigators say that the city's budget director showed favoritism on a proposed $200 million contract toward a firm that was at the heart of the Parking Violations Bureau scandal. The Department of Investigation released a report that said Philip Michael showed favoritism to Lockheed Information Management Services on a proposed contract to privatize the Parking Bureau's operations. That report said Transportation Commissioner Riccio testified that Michael told him that if Riccio gave the company a small contract so it could show what it could do, Michael could help the transportation department with budget problems. Michael denies these charges, but the report has led one city councilman to call for the budget director's resignation or firing. Jack? There's a big question mark tonight that's hanging over last Sunday's disturbance at the Westchester County Jail. County Executive Andrew O'Work is saying now the whole thing may have been staged by the guards and inmates there. Ed Miller standing by live outside the prison with a late report for us. Ed? Jack, jail guards in cahoots with convicted cons or grandstanding by a publicity-hungry politician who would rather listen to the word of a career criminal, believe the word of a career criminal, than supervisors on the scene. These are the charges flying back and forth here tonight uh, while... Uh, apparently instigated by some inmates who claim that they were offered preferential treatment if they agreed to help fake a mini riot. A particular inmate produced weapons. This corrections officer is one of four who now stands accused of faking his own attack this past Sunday. An incident here where four guards were allegedly taken hostage at knife point and held for over an hour by six dangerous inmates. County boss Andrew O'Rourke says he has concrete evidence to prove it was a fake. Some inmate has said that uh, he was offered something uh, from correction officers in order to go along with this. If he gave a good performance? Yeah, and, you know, played his role. Uh, and I, I just think it got out of hand because one of the inmates, instead of going along with the plot, tried to escape. Corrections officers have been working here for the past three years without a contract, and O'Rourke guesses this may have been a tactic to force the issue to a head. Corrections officers have also complained that there are not enough guards here to supervise the jail. Still, union head Thomas O'Neill says his men would never fake such an incident for any reason. I think it's despicable that this allegation is being made. I think it's purely motivated by politics. I think that it is being stated so that the focus will come off of the deplorable conditions that exist in here a couple of months before the election. Making matters worse tonight, there have been several skirmishes inside as inmates hear this story on television. One inmate actually uh, barricaded himself inside his room. There have been, however, no injuries. However, the entire issue of inmates joining forces with guards, a very sensitive one. Uh, the, uh, uh, the corrections officers are demanding that the FBI be called in to investigate, and uh, Andrew O'Rourke has handed his end of the investigation over to the District Attorney. I'm Ed Miller, live in Valhalla. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Ed. The next stop for jailed Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman may be Afghanistan. The radical cleric has eight more days to appeal his deportation order after a judge branded him a threat to the United States. The Sheikh is supposed to go to Egypt to stand trial for treason, but the cleric's lawyers are trying to cut a deal. They say they'll stop all appeals if the Sheikh is allowed to travel to Afghanistan, where the Islamic government there would welcome him. A major victory for Kimberly Mays today. She's the teenager at the heart of the so-called switched at birth case. A ruling today by a judge in Sarasota, Florida, gives Kimberly the legal right to cut off all ties to her biological parents, Ernest and Regina Twig. Robert Mays, the man who raised her, will remain her legal father. Kimberly was swapped at birth with a baby who went home with the Twigs and later died. The Twigs have pursued visitation rights with Kimberly ever since learning that she, in fact, was their real biological daughter. And the Twigs say they'll appeal the ruling all the way now to the Supreme Court. 
Still ahead tonight, a major investigation has been launched into allegations some U.S. Marines from Camp Pendleton were participants in a homosexual pornography operation. Police in Los Angeles arrested an actor in connection with the alleged rape on the set of an extra in Whoopi Goldberg's new movie, Sister Act 2. The traffic cones are up all over Long Island, but nobody's working. We'll tell you why. And there's a break tonight in the case of the baby turtles, judged to be a threat to our society as we know it. Fabulous Room Plus Mica furniture at Factory Direct Savings. We bought the factory, so you pay less. Room Plus, just round the corner. When you're hot, you're hot. Grab sizzling summer savings only at your Ford dealer on Ford Explorer. Hottest seller in its class. Explorer comes standard with air, stereo cassette, power, everything. And right now, save over $1,900. This summer sizzler won't be around long for hot savings on five of the ten best sellers in America. See your tri-state. Posturepedic support, only from Sealy. Channel 11, WPIX New York, a Tribune Broadcasting Station. There's a potentially explosive investigation beginning at Camp Pendleton, California tonight involving Marines and pornography. Investigators say at least two dozen Marines and perhaps as many as 200 military men may have been involved in an alleged pornography ring, posing in gay pornographic movies and mail order magazines. It is against military law for enlisted men and women to pose for pornography, but police are holding out the possibility that the models in the magazines and films are civilians merely dressing up as Marines. Charges tonight of rape on the set of Whoopi Goldberg's new movie. Police say 19-year-old Ron Johnson, who's an actor appearing in Sister Act 2, the sequel to Goldberg's hit comedy, was arrested after a 16-year-old extra in the movie claimed he raped her. The incident allegedly happened on Monday in the actor's dressing room trailer. Johnson's last movie was Zebrahead. Moments of terror at Long Island's Whitman, Walt Whitman Mall today as part of a ceiling collapsed on top of some construction workers. It happened about noon inside a gift shop under construction. Two workers were pinned under tons of concrete and rubble before they were rushed to Huntington Hospital. Tonight they're reported to be in stable condition with head injuries. No shoppers were hurt and no word yet on what caused the roof to cave in. Truck drivers are on strike, and it's virtually halted road and bridge work on Long Island at this the height of the construction season. With about two months left now until repaving work must close down for the winter, Local 282 of the Teamsters Union called a strike against 40 members of the Nassau Suffolk Contractors Association after contract talks broke down over work rules. The contractors handle most of the road and bridge work going on on Long Island. Heidi? In New Jersey, a major scam to take insurance companies for a ride has been cracked wide open. As Caesar Darius reports now, investigators have caught up with those con artists waiting for an accident to happen. Fraud investigators call them ghost riders. They file phony insurance claims against bus operators for non-existing injuries. And now, an undercover sting operation has netted over 100 individuals, including nine doctors, four lawyers, and two Newark policemen. Operators of the Orange Newark Elizabeth Bus Company became suspicious when they detected many similar claims paying out similar amounts. Increasingly, we hear stories of people who are present at the scene of accidents, who then suddenly volunteer themselves into the accident scene and claim to have all kinds of fake injuries. State and federal officials then stepped in with surveillance cameras and staged bogus accidents on buses filled only with state insurance fraud investigators. Then the fun began. In one case, 17 people boarded the bus after the staged accident and later claimed injuries. In one accident, a man was caught actually directing opportunistic ghost riders. The man said, all you people who want to get paid, you stay right there. Stay down. Wait for the ambulance to come. Your neck hurts. Your legs hurt. All of that. You'll get some money. Stay there. They pay. Some doctors and lawyers also employ people known as runners who show up at an accident scene and pass out literature encouraging the filing of claims which can run into the millions of dollars. These costs are passed on to passengers. The problem with catching ghost riders is that it's so easy to get away with. If you stumble upon the scene of an accident, simply jump on a bus. But from now on, would-be scam artists better smile, because they will be caught on camera. Reporting from Newark, Caesar Darius, Channel 11 News at 10. When we continue, Linda has the forecast, and Jerry has the story of the Yankees running into some trouble in the Bronx tonight. Plus, first the Oscar, now a baby for Clint Eastwood. What a year. Coming up. <laughs> 
drugs, rock and roll. Ready to roll? The girls are waiting. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. You want a couple of lines? Sex, drugs, rock and roll. 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 Michael J. Fox, Kiefer Sutherland. Last up, time to get off. Bright lights, big city. Tomorrow night at 8 on Channel 11. needs a lot of hot air when you can get a great lease on a Mazda 626 with more room and a better basic warranty than Altima or Accord? Now during Mazda Simple Summer Savings Days, the value's greater than ever on every Mazda sedan. But hurry, they're going fast. Our values are going up, 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 No gimmicks, just great deals. Mazda, it just feels right. To see all these animals in their natural habitats, you'd spend thousands traveling to over 30 countries. Not to mention trudging through scorching desert heat, malaria-infested jungles, and who knows what else. Or you could just come to the Bronx Zoo. We've got over 600 species in our sanctuary. Some you can't see anywhere else. So come to the zoo this weekend. It'll cost you next to nothing, and you won't even need your shots. Where imaginations run wild. you save during the Dodge 93 model clearance. Take that caravan with the family value package you've been wanting. Yep, the one with air at no extra charge. For a total savings of up to $13.57. So you can buy America's best-selling minivan for around $14.5. Is this correct? Absolutely. See your nearest Dodge dealer today. We know how to help. This portion of the news brought to you by Dodge. The big New York City baby turtle roundup continued today in Lower Manhattan. Animal welfare officials seized more than 2,500 of the turtles from illegal street vendors in Chinatown, bringing the number of confiscated turtles to 3,300. Two people are under arrest for selling them. Baby turtles' size, which is less than about four inches, are illegal because they carry the salmonella bacteria and they can easily infect little children. I don't know about you, but I'll sleep a lot better tonight. Me too. Knowing that. Absolutely. Linda Church is here with a forecast. They locked him up. <laughs> big, big news. <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, high temperatures today across the area. In the 70s, trending up to 80 degrees in New York City at Central Park, up to 77. Record high, 94 set a 1987. Record low, 55 set a 1915. Temperatures today still running about 5 degrees below normal. Tomorrow, though, will start to warm up. High temperatures getting well into the 80s. Partly cloudy now at 69 degrees. The humidity at 81 percent. Winds are out of the east at 9. The barometer is steady. Temperatures holding in the 60s and 70s. 71 for Poughkeepsie, 72 in Bridgeport. Overnight lows down into the 60s, 50s north and west, so a real nice night out there. Clear skies across the area. We have a little bit of cloudiness. This was the cloudiness that dominated earlier in the day. There you can see it. But as the day progressed, those clouds cleared up. High pressure built across the area, down from Canada, brought some cooler air today. But as it sits on top of us tomorrow, temperatures will start to climb with all that sunshine out there. Early tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., 67 degrees under mostly sunny skies here in the city. 64 for Islip. Temperatures in the 50s north and west, so a real nice night. For tomorrow afternoon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature up to 85 in the city. 79 for Islip. 80 degrees for Bridgeport and 86 tomorrow afternoon for Poughkeepsie. Five days ahead now for you. It gets pretty nice on Saturday and Sunday, but we do have some scattered showers. Even the possibility of some thunderstorms on Friday. The high temperature on Friday, 88 degrees. Saturday, 80 one sunny, cool, no humidity, hey. no problem. So a great weekend shaping up. Sunday, mostly sunny skies, high temperature of 84 degrees. On Monday, mostly sunny skies, high temperature in the mid 80s. Oh, not bad for August, Sounds right? Good, yeah. yeah, next okay. couple days. Great, thanks, Linda. Straight ahead, Jerry has the sports. And the movement to keep the Yankees in the Bronx pits up steam with a rally outside the stadium. Stay with us.
This evening's cultural calendar is brought to you by the card, the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Catch salsa music from Frankie Ruiz at the South Street Seaport, Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Lincoln Center's free out-of-doors festival continues with the sounds of Relâché, Philadelphia's acclaimed contemporary ensemble, Thursday, 6 p.m., North Plaza. And it's Greek Music Night at Astoria Park in Queens, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. This cultural calendar was brought to you by American Express. New York Yankee owner George Steinbrenner came under attack at the stadium today. Steinbrenner has been threatening, as you know, to move the ball club out of the Bronx. Well, a committee calling itself Keep the Bombers in the Bronx staged a rally during the first inning outside the stadium. The group says they will prove to George that Yankee fans want their want team to, to stay where it is. Visible campaign to unify the city behind the theme Yankees Stay Home. People have heard from governors, mayors, borough presidents, and team owners. Now I think it's appropriate for the fans. To, uh, to chip in. The committee says it'll spread its message with campaign buttons, bumper stickers, and bus stop ads. You'll be wanting to watch for those in the mm -hmm. weeks and months Whatever ahead. it takes. Yes, but for uh, Yankee fans today, not such a great day, right? Yes. yes. Uh, last night, the Yankees heard me say that they would win the pennants, and so today there was unbearable pressure on them. And they folded. A lot of men left on base. They don't count these days. They've got to change that rule. 4-2 final. Texas wins it. And not good news from Cleveland as well. Abbott got hit early. Second inning. One runner on. And Palmer on a high curveball. Drives one to left center. And it's 2-0 Texas. Third inning. Bases loaded. One out. The Yankees have a run in. This was the key play. Bernie Williams at the plate. A chance to put the Yankees ahead. Instead, a ground ball to short. Diaz. Nice play. They turn it into a double play. Fourth inning, Gonzalez gets a breaking pitch again from Abbott, who just wasn't that sharp. Rips one right through Boggs to knock in another run. In the seventh, with the score 4-1, Mattingly on a curveball. Homer's again his 15th. Not enough. Yankees lose it 4-2. Mattingly also singled. In Cleveland, just moments ago, the Jays won again an extra inning, so they lead by 2.5. 2, two nothing. Indians in the first. Borders drives in Olderud. Second inning, 3-2, Indians, and Sorrento drives one into right field to make it 4-2 Cleveland. But in the eighth inning, with the score 6-5 Cleveland, big double by White down the left field line to tie it up. They went to the 11th inning, and with Olerud at second base, Molitor, great clutch hitter, comes up and once again comes through. A shot right up the middle, Olerud scores, and that was it. Final was 7-6. Two and a half over the Yankees right now, but don't worry. This is only August. <laughs> At Fenway, Darwin, a one-hit shutout, had a no-hitter until the eighth inning. Red Sox win it five to nothing. Baltimore over Seattle, eight to one. In the ninth, and now it's a final. Kansas City over Minnesota, five to two. They trail by just two and a half now. Tim Salmon is 26th home run in California. It's tied at two. Oakland over Milwaukee, two to one. In Cincinnati, the Mets, tired of being kicked around, did the kicking tonight. I mean, big time. 2-2 two, two in the fourth. Jeremy Burnitz with two on makes it 5-2. to two. In the sixth inning with the bases loaded, Tanana, of all people, who runs with the speed of a U.N. debate, <laughs> drives one down the first baseline, and that's a triple. Clears the bases, and moments later, his battery mate Hunley hits a monster shot to make it 10-2. to two. They go on to win it 12-2. to two. Is it too late for the Mets? You bet. Yeah, you're, <laughs> it's unanimous. It's unanimous. In Pittsburgh, the Giants... Uh, win with Bonds hitting two home runs. He's got 38 now. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, the Braves got a run on the bottom of the ninth. They're now in the 11th inning. McGriff is 27th home run. They're tied. Philadelphia beat Colorado or leads them in the fourth 4-3. Cardinals over San Diego 2-0 in the seventh. Sosa his 29th home run. Hibbert goes eight innings for the win. Cubs win 2-0 over Montreal. Florida and Houston 1-1 in the eighth inning. The Auburn football program has been put on probation by the NCAA. Apparently, a player who played for Auburn said he was paid. The NCAA looked into it and said, yes, that's what happened. And so no TV this year, unless they signed a contract, they said already. That's like, I'm going to send you to jail unless you've got some important appointments. But uh, <laughs> right, Auburn well, will not go into a bowl game either this year or next. Oh, that's okay, thanks, right. Jerry. Finally tonight, he's played cowboys, road cops, even a Secret Service agent. Now Clint Eastwood is getting ready for the role of daddy. Clint Eastwood and his girlfriend, Frances Fisher, who had a role in his movie, The Unforgiven, announced the birth last week of a baby girl. Her Where name is Francesca Ruth Eastwood. She's named after...